I have Tesla stock. I bought Tesla stock. I started off in April with uh, something like 25 or 30 grand. It's worth $140,000 now. <laughs> well, where, where am I going to find anything like that? I mean, right. I should have just, I should have sold the company and just bought Tesla stock and I'd be a gazillionaire by now. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're an engineering nerd, or a Tesla fanboy slash fangirl, this is your lucky day. In this video, we're watching a few clips from a recent podcast interview Sandy Munro did with Grid Connections. There's a link in the description to the full interview. Highly recommend you guys check it out. We're focusing on Tesla's technological and manufacturing advantages, how Elon Musk is playing 4D chess with the entire automotive industry, and why outsourcing is for idiots. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like three free stocks, yes, one, two, three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Open a new account and fund it with $100 and you'll get three free stocks, two of them valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. Oh, and by the way, let me know in the comments, guys, if you'd like me to interview Sandy Munro. Spoiler alert, I'll do it anyway, but I'm just curious how much interest there is. Shout out to Munro and Associates too. You guys will probably hear from me early next year. Let's get into it. How is Tesla kind of impacting the automotive market and this kind of push towards EVs? Like um, you mentioned the casting. What, what are the areas from a technology standpoint that really is making them lead the way? Well, their electronics are to die for. I mean, um, nobody has anything quite like them. Uh, they, uh, they're they half the size with about triple the power. In case you're unaware, Sandy Munro is the automotive expert of automotive experts. And his comments just on Tesla's electronics aren't, oh yeah, they're decent, they're good, they're better than everyone else. No, no, no. They are to die for. Then he goes on to describe that they're half the size and triple the power of anything else in the marketplace. This is an enormously important comment, easily overlooked. This wasn't just, oh yeah, they're okay. They're fucking light years ahead of everybody else, just on electronics. Let's see what else Sandy has to say. But that's number one. So the number one thing is the electronics and the software that goes along with it. Um, second would be powertrain. Um, I like their electric motors better than everybody's. All right, we're gonna pause here for just one moment. What are the things that matter most in terms of the technology inside an electric vehicle? Now, call me crazy, call me crazy, but I'd probably suggest the electronics, the software, the electric motor, and finally, drum roll, wait for it, battery technology. They're the four key elements that really matter in terms of the product. Then behind the scenes, the final piece of the puzzle that really counts is manufacturing expertise. How cheap, efficient, and fast can these vehicles be produced? Hmm, surely Tesla can't be winning on all of these fronts, can they? They've got some magic stuff inside the castings. I already had a couple of guys come back and tell me, oh, we look, we, 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 we couldn't find it. Yeah, you didn't look hard enough because we looked at the Model 3 castings and we looked at the Model Y castings and that little teeny tiny ingredient, that little alloy is in both of them. Those, that alloy helps, um, it's probably helping in two ways. It probably helps the flow of the uh, aluminum, but it's, it's also doing something, it, it, it refracts somehow and, uh, and makes a difference to the, uh, uh, to the performance of the electric motor. So I like the electric motor um, a lot. And then I think they have the best, they had the best batteries on the planet with the 2170s. And now with the 4680s, it's going to be a lot of catching up to do. So there are some companies who've, uh, who've got uh, solid state batteries um, that, that I've looked at and I'm pretty excited about. Um, but, but I haven't seen anybody that can compare with what, uh, what Tesla has, uh, has accomplished. Well, he said it, not me. Now, I'm often accused of being a deluded Tesla fanboy. I understand these accusations are usually coming from basement-dwelling adult virgins. I don't take them too seriously. Some people seem to be under the impression that I was a Tesla fanboy first, then I decided I liked the company and liked the stock. Doesn't seem to occur to these numbnuts that maybe it's the opposite way. Maybe I saw what they were doing, was very impressed about the execution, looked into the company, invested in the stock, and over time became a fanboy of the business and their execution rather than the other way around. But of course, 
I can't always get through to these people. However, when we hear these comments from an automotive industry expert, kind of hard to argue. Sandy is independent, unbiased, and just sharing his thoughts. And I mean, Tesla is winning on all the fronts that matter as far as Sandy's concerned. Let's continue. Tesla is inventing their own alloys. They, they, don't, uh, they don't just subscribe to whatever's in the marketplace. They, um, they, order, um, they order their aluminum and uh, it's all special, special batch. And then they shoot it themselves. And I know to make the, um, the castings that are going into the Model Y right now, those are shot in milliseconds. People think that that's baloney. And uh, I did initially as well, because I, I never heard, I don't, there's how do you make uh, aluminum so viscous that you could shove it in that fast? But, uh, but in essence, they're made in milliseconds. And um, it basically builds that whole area, the whole back end of the car in a millisecond. Um, there's virtually no machining done on it. There's some uh, trimming that has to happen to get rid of the, get rid of the runners and gates and whatnot. But uh, that's a millisecond or let's say that, let's say they can get them a second at a crack. Okay. And then with the trimming and stuff like that, maybe another, I don't know, let's say at the outset, 30 seconds, all done. Okay. If I've got 50 pieces that I just replaced, that's 50 dies that have to, uh, have to be stamping product. And they're progressive dies. You can't just bend that aluminum into one or that steel into one shape that quickly. Um, then you got to be, um, uh, you got to take those pieces and you got to put them together in a fixture and you got to weld them and then you've got to on and on and on. Sometimes it's more than welding. Sometimes you have to put a, you have to put uh, an adhesive or something in between them to weld them together. So they, uh, like an adhesive or something. All these things have to happen. It's going to take a lot longer than 30 seconds, a lot longer. Now, I don't want to labor the point too much here, but it really is worth letting the implications of this giga casting sink in. It is a microcosm of Tesla's incredible improvement in manufacturing techniques, technology, and speed. Just think, hundreds of pieces have now vanished from the entire process. You don't need to store the materials in a warehouse. You don't need to stamp the pieces. You don't need to attach or even handle the pieces. This eliminates an enormous amount of time, complexity, room for errors, tooling, expensive robots, and more. But when I get done with the casting, it's going to be dead nuts perfect. When I get done with the weldment, it could be in a lot of different directions. Things happen when you weld products and stamp parts and stuff like that. It's different than one piece done. And Tesla has gotten to the point where they move the material so quickly, there's no induced stresses. And with no induced stresses, it means that mm, it won't warp. And if it doesn't warp, guess what? Um, <laughs> it means it's going to be perfect every time. I don't have to heat treat those things. Mostly people have to put it into a T6 heat treat. And when you do that, then the induced stresses that you've got come free, but then you, eh, you twist the uh, casting. These don't have to be heat treated, so they, they don't have to, they, there's no chance that you're ever going to warp anything. <laughs> Their casting technology is phenomenal. And, and in essence, this is a result of, uh, of their, like their outside interests. When I was at Ford, we had an aerospace uh, division. We got rid of that because uh, some guys from Harvard came over and said, focus on your core competency. <laughs> okay, good. Get rid of seats. Gone. You should not be doing anything electronic. Get rid of that. You don't need it. It's nasty. They're going to save money. I can remember a guy uh, giving a speech when I was a uh, consultant with, uh, with General Motors. And this guy was talking about the ultimate vehicle and uh, the, the, the direction that, uh, that GM should try and think about going. And in essence, what he said was um, that... <laughs> They would buy all the pieces and then from somebody else. And then we have somebody else put them all together and there would be one guy, one guy. That's it. One union guy. And he would have the GM badge, whether it was Chevy or GMC or whatever. And he'd go right on the nose of the car. Done. Benito. That's it. 
Are you kidding me? I mean, I remember listening to this guy and I was sitting next to a vice president and, um, and he leaned back and he, he said, I, I may have to sell my stock because I mean, this is like stupid, absolutely stupid. But, um, the guy in charge thought it was a brilliant. He, this is great. We can get rid of all the people. We don't have to manage anything. Yeah. Right. All we have to do is one part. Um, you have to be careful about um, hiring consultants sometimes. Now, many of you may not be aware of the extent to which automotive manufacturers outsource. The truth is, the core competency of most automotive manufacturers today is building internal combustion engines. Basically, everything else, they're ordering parts from suppliers, outsourcing as much as they possibly can because you know what? Internal combustion engines, that's our area of expertise. We just got to get this one thing right, no problems, put all our eggs in one basket. It's not like a new technology is going to come and disrupt our entire industry or anything, is it? <laughs> uh, you know, I think I was a little bit harsh on legacy automakers. I think actually they have two core competencies, building internal combustion engines and manufacturing vehicles at scale. Of course, anybody with functioning grey matter at this point in time understands without a shadow of a doubt that internal combustion engines will be practically worthless in a matter of years when EVs are available economically to the masses. So it's a good thing these legacy automakers could fall back on their decades or century plus of manufacturing expertise, isn't it? <laughs> Wait a minute, silly me, I kind of forgot that in the span of three years from the very first Model 3s to the 2020 Model Y, Tesla has gone from sucking absolute shit at automotive manufacturing to being, wait for it, better than every other company on the planet. Now, I'm not exaggerating. This isn't the deluded Tesla fanboy coming out. Shout out to the basement dwellers. This is a factual statement. Tesla's ability to manufacture has gone from horse shit to industry leading in three years. Can somebody please, please explain what in the actual f were Ford, GM, Toyota, Hyundai, Honda, you name it. What the fuck were they all doing for the last couple of decades? I know what they were doing. Nothing. Because it's scary to change. I'm scared. It's so comfortable to just keep doing the same thing. I have, I have Tesla stock. I bought Tesla stock. I started off in April with uh, something like 25 or 30 grand. It's worth $140,000 now. Well, where, where am I going to find anything like that? I mean, right. I should have just, I should have sold the company and just bought Tesla stock and I'd be a gazillionaire by now. I love hearing Sandy talking about Tesla stock. And he does have a point. I have no question on the private market. Munro and Associates would sell for an eight-figure sum. So you guys do the math. But, but the, the deal here is that they have an eye or an understanding of making money. And the rest of the guys they're trying to save money, make money, save money. They're not the same. One means I'm going to take my money and put it in a sock and throw it underneath my bed. The other one means I'm going to make an investment, a big investment if you're looking at Tesla. And I'm going to take that investment and I'm going to eat this guy's house. This is a deceptively important point from Sandy. The vast majority of legacy automotive manufacturers are in preservation mode, cruise control, asleep at the wheel. They're scared to take risks. They'd much rather keep the status quo. I mean, after all, imagine being an executive and proposing something outrageous such as, huh, we need to develop electric vehicles, guys. It's going to cost us billions of dollars. Our investors will be pissed. We'll post no profits for a number of years, but we've got to do it. Otherwise, we're going bankrupt. Who wants to hear that inside a legacy automotive manufacturer? especially when the executive you're talking to is going to be retiring with a fat exit package in five years. Regular viewers of the channel will have heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again, and again, and again. Why? Credibility matters. In 2030, the vast majority of legacy automakers on planet Earth today will not exist. They will either have gone bankrupt, have been acquired, or have merged. Mark my fucking words. It's, it's, it's a totally different way of thinking. And, um, and I know... I know why. Hang on a second. Worries. This, this is what I use right here for my business. This is called the Art of War by Sun Tzu, and I only I only recommend one kind, the Thomas Cleary edition. 
I second Sandy's recommendation, fantastic book. And you guys are about to get a lesson not in the art of war, but in the art of plugging. If you guys would like to listen to the art of war for free, there's a link in the description. You can open a new account with Audible, start a trial and choose any book in their library to listen to absolutely for free. And you only have to read the first 40 pages. You would understand this and you can take your MBA and set it on fire because this will win every time over, over the top of a, uh, over the top of an MBA every time you can't believe how many really smart guys I've, I've beaten or like when my customers are using this and the rest of them have got these, you know, things that they get from these coast and my guys win. How come? Because this is teaching you how to win. And the other one is teaching you how to save money and it, they're not the same. So at the end of the day, um, he, uh, Elon Musk, he is a big fan. If he hasn't, if he doesn't read this every night, I'll be damn surprised. I really, I, I think, uh, I think he's really got a good gri- gra- grasp on what do we do to make money. And making money is totally different than trying to save money, which is what most of the other OEMs are, are going after. This is a great place to wrap up. Whether or not Elon Musk is consciously following the thoughts and ideas laid out in the art of war, Who knows? But in either case, I have no question. There will be serious casualties. And by the way, guys, there will be another Sandy Munro video dropping later this week. And don't forget, there's a link in the description of the full interview. I highly recommend you guys check it out. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you're in the US and you'd like three free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. Open a new account and fund it with $100 and you'll get three free stocks, two of them valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.